The root of the problem is telling kids who have no idea what they want to do with their lives to make the biggest financial decision of their future before they have any real world experience, claim that this is what is required right now in the modern workplace, and then promising that we are going to bail them out. Let's start with this. Elizabeth Warren was recently questioned uh, by a dad uh, regarding student loans and having put his daughter through college. Uh, I just want to ask one question. My daughter's getting out of school. I've saved all my money. She doesn't have any student loans. Am I going to get my money back? So you're going to pay for people who didn't save any money, and those of us that did the right thing get screwed. What? Of course we did. My buddy had fun, bought a car, went on vacations. I saved my money. He made more than I did. But I worked a double shift, worked extra. My daughter's work sheet is 10. So you're laughing. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. We come back. Right thing, no. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Compare that to Ted Cruz when he was in Iowa when he was talking about corn subsidies and this yeah. guy came and said, you're going to yeah. hurt our industry here. And he explained to the guy, by the end of it, the guy understood that corn subsidies might actually be bad for his farm. Yes. Imagine if it's come back and spin, <laughs> no. <laughs> or no, or, or no. laughing, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the better way. Just right. laugh, laughing. laugh in the constituent's face. Hey, I yeah. saved uh, for a long time. I'm the American dream. I have a family. I put my daughter through college. Yeah. <laughs> I can't buy your vote. And yeah, this, in creating a new victim class, and right now the victim class extends to people who willingly took on student loans, so I'm getting loose with the terms yes. here. Um, we create real victims. Who might the real victims be? Like this father, or people like uh, uh, folks who work here on this team who worked two, three jobs uh, to pay their way through, through school, or went to community colleges, or went to trade school, or some yeah. people who work here who actually didn't go to university and instead gained workplace experience and worked their way up. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the actual victims because they will be double footing the bill. They saved their money, right? They avoided the student loans or they paid off their own student loans. And now you are asking them to pay your student loans. It's imp I understand how it seems compassionate yeah. to people. Yeah. Hey, these folks are saddled with debt. And we'll get into that in a second and why that's not necessarily accurate. Even let's assume that student loans, that it's predatory lending, it's the bank's fault. It still wouldn't solve the issue uh, in forcing somebody else to pay that bill twice. Okay, so let's go through this idea, though, the crisis, because it's, right. it's predicated on the idea that there's a crisis right now. This is a huge claim you see from current Democrats that there's $1.4 trillion in student debt, right? $35,000 on average per individual. I think we have a, we have a clip on this. Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. Senator Bernie Sanders is joining others in Congress to unveil a sweeping I mean, new I plan to wipe out the, the nation's clip. crushing student debt. <laughs> this proposal completely eliminates student debt in this country and ends the absurdity of sentencing an entire generation, the millennial generation, oh, to Jesus. a lifetime of debt for the crime <laughs> of doing the right thing. 1.5 trillion wow. in student loan debt. And this time we're going to choose our people, right, Philadelphia? <laughs> what do you mean, our people? Yeah. Debt for ninety-five percent of the folks who've got it. Two questions. Oh. Why is Andrew Yang wearing his hat up like Ernest goes to camp? <laughs> right. And second, um, Very high. <laughs> could Bernie Sanders be any more so transparent high. with his pandering? Our generation, the millennials. What about boomers? F them. <laughs> <laughs> the right millennials up, who undoubtedly will vote. For me, right? No, 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 no student loans. I'll pay for your loans. <laughs> the really? That How? I don't like at How? All. It, and this is something that's important to, to note. It sounds like a lot. 1.4 right. trillion. It's not nothing. Car loan debt in this country is about 1.2 trillion dollars. Mm. And cards depreciate way faster than an education, unless, of course, it's a gender studies degree, in which case it <laughs> depreciates 100% yeah. once you roll your fat, angry feminist ass off the lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we're talking about car payments. Mortgage loan debt, by the way. That comes in at an average of over $200,000 per person. That's $9.5 trillion. Oh, oh gosh. Why isn't that considered a crisis? By the way, here's a quick lesson for you. And people got mad at this week. If you want everyone out there, okay? Uncle Steven's taking care of you. If you want to build wealth, don't buy a new car, ever. Right. And to other people, if you want to go green, right, you want to be an environmentalist, don't buy a new car. It's the same. Ever, period. <laughs> it is better for you to buy an old 85 Bronco than that new Tesla that has yeah. to be created and driven off the lot so that you can have your rich, white, liberal guilt status symbol. <laughs> a lot of people just don't realize someone always has to pay the bill. It's like yes. the idea with yeah. healthcare and pre-existing conditions. What you're doing is now you've astronomically raised healthcare costs, right? We're talking oh, about right. premiums, deductibles, yep, yep. because people who opted, and by the way, most people who didn't have health insurance chose not to have health insurance. When we crunch the numbers, so you can go back and search that segment. Uh, they could afford health insurance, particularly young people. They opted mm -hmm. not to until they had a serious condition. Well, the whole point to 
to buying health care insurance is it's basically creating a pool of lower risk so that you can use it when you need it. So the people who bought health insurance before the emergency arose, that's why they locked in lower rates, then had to pay a higher bill because everyone else who didn't have that kind of forethought is now joining into the same pool. It ends up harming people who've thought ahead, who've planned responsibly. Yeah. Not always. Some people get some tough breaks. By the way, tough break. Notifications don't really work. You have to hit the notification <laughs> bell. Oh. Hit all notifications. <laughs> yes, nice. Uh, because thank you, YouTube. And um, please do consider joining up at lotofcutter.com slash mug club. Mug club, you get everything that uh, is available on Blaze TV in this wonderful hand mug and like... 19 more shows of this per week. Okay, yeah. I exaggerate. <laughs> it's four. 78. All right, here's another point I think but we need to get to. it feels like um, If we're talking about who it harms, who does, uh, or who would, rather, student loan forgiveness, who would that reward, right? Bernie Sanders actually uses this term. He just talked about, uh, he uses the term punishing, I believe, mm. right now. We should stop mm. punishing people for going to school. We have a clip. Bottom line is we should not be punishing people for getting a higher education. It is time to hit the reset button. <laughs> Under the proposal that we introduced today, all student debt would be canceled in six months. Well, you okay. know what, Bernie? Maybe well, you should be punished for being a <laughs> lifelong unemployed couch surfing asshole who's mm. never been gainfully employed aside from suckling at the government's teat. Mm. Maybe you should feel a little bit of sting. <laughs> Let's it look would at motivate this. you a little bit. <laughs> Forgiving student debt, it punishes those who worked hard and never went into debt, like we've talked yeah. about the Iowa debt. But who does it reward? Okay, people think that if we forgive student loans, and this is something, again, I understand why people think it's compassionate, but the numbers do matter. They think that most of this money is going to go to those who have a hard time paying off their loans, right? That's how Bernie presents it. Right. A ton of it would go to people who are making a lot of money anyway. So yes, the average, we'll come back to that, student debt is around $35,000, but let's look at how it's distributed. I think we have it, let's look at a chart. We have it right here. Most of the people, mm -hmm. if you look, fall uh, on the low end of that spectrum, well below 30,000. Yeah. And then you have students with astronomical costs, right? They stretch things out on the opposite end of the spectrum. So those on the high end, you see in this chart, typically come from families oh. making over $114,000 a year, and they go into careers like law and dentistry. So it takes some time to pay off those loans, but they're actually living pretty comfortably. A huge, um, or I should say, a huge portion of these large numbers that are being cited, it's actually evidence of a crisis um, that is somewhat created by upper class families who yeah. take out loans to put their kids into very lucrative career paths. I mean, how much is law school? I mean, it can range anywhere from, if you're at certain state programs, uh, 20,000 a year to 50 or 60,000 a year, all told with expenses, so. Right, exactly, wow. but you're not gonna be destitute if you go into law. The people, by the way, who have problems paying off their loans, it's actually a pretty small group. Yeah. They tend to have people who actually have a hard time paying off the loans, meaning settled by debt, tends to be less than $5,000 when you eliminate Jeez. people who are going to medical, law school, yeah. uh, where they have a lot of student debt initially and they pay it off quickly. People who long-term have problems paying it, $5,000. That's a number that matters. So right. let's, before we go to the idea of federal government, what could be a personal solution for you, right? Is there a silver lining? Yeah, there is. It doesn't require any federal uh, intervention at all, okay? So here are the steps you can take. Number one, uh, go to a reasonable college or trade school, okay? Then number two, choose a okay. major discipline that'll set you up for a well-paying job. Number three, finish your degree. That's it. That's it. Finish your degree. Statistically, <laughs> you'll be absolutely fine. Again, those people who have uh, that debt of $5,000, yeah. hard time paying, most of them don't finish. But this brings me to point number three. Um, everyone out there, you should consider trade schools. Trade schools have a ton of advantages over yeah. four-year uh, colleges. On average, by the way, they have about 70% less debt, twice the job placement, almost yeah. twice the starting salary. Average debt, 36000 at a four-year college. We just went through those numbers. Job placement, about 50%. Average debt, $10,000 for a two-year trade school. 100% average job placement with almost wow. twice the starting salary. But again, we've, we market this idea of the college experience, which for many is four years of glorified alcoholism. Certainly, if you're going there... <laughs> in yeah. a, Don't forget the victory lap if they go for five. Right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like this, you don't need to do it. And this does come from a lot of intellectuals, a lot of politicians who place this value on an elite yeah. university that is not reflected in real world numbers. I've had parents be horrified when kids come up at yeah. live shows. Like, can you give my son any advice? I said, well, what do you want to do? And if they say, I want to be a fireman or whatever, oh, that's great, do it. If they say, ah, yeah. I don't know yet. I say, well, don't go to university. Yeah. They're like, oh, exactly. cover your ears. Yeah. Why? Exactly. Why would you want that kid to have debt? And I think it's very important to, when we're talking about going to university or whether you go to trade school, do choose your major wisely, okay? This is another kind of solution that you can all take into account here, or not, and then ask Bernie to take my money to bail you out, fine. <laughs> but think about how you make any other purchases. 
right? Do you just go out and, uh, and buy the most expensive car you can afford? Do you go out and you buy the most expensive house you can afford? No financial advisor would say that's what you should do. No. But that is exactly what we do with universities. We tell kids, apply to all of the top schools, meaning the most expensive, the most prestigious schools. That's usually what parents tell their kids exactly. to yeah. see which one takes you in. And if we look at university rankings based on economic value added to students' lives, not their status symbol, not how many people see the, 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 uh, the crest on your jacket. Right, yeah. <laughs> But how much value it actually adds to students' lives? Um, here, we can look at the metrics actually uh, with these numbers. Look at uh, average student salaries, the employment rate, if students are employed in their particular field of studies. According to that metric, many of the top colleges, they're just public universities and state schools. Yeah. Basically, wow. unless you're planning on going to the Supreme Court, you don't need an <laughs> Ivy League university to be at the top of your field. People in the top of any of these given fields, are, there is no, no correlation between a specific school or degree from that school and success. Now, if you know exactly what you want to do, let's say practice law, or yeah. you host a podcast where you want to tell everyone that you practice law, Ben Shapiro coming up very soon after this. <laughs> I think Andrew Yang, to yeah. his credit, has talked about how some, somehow maybe cost should be tied to those fields of education. And if you look at majors like... Um, uh, I think it's education, like art, uh, hi art, history, ethnic studies, things like that. Yeah. You know, things that are kind of useless that you can learn on Google in two afternoons. <laughs> you see, they're not high-earning fields. Right. But they require a comparable uh, amount of student loan debt. Right. On the other hand, the majors that have the highest earnings to debt ratio are STEM degrees. Right. Which yeah. is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mathematics. Yeah. He's not, not a math medicine. Asian. Not a math agent. A, a master. Put it this way: a master's in humanities from Stanford is like having a brand new Maserati in your driveway. It's a it's a modern status symbol, and it costs you a lot of money for a piece of. Sh <laughs> and someone's like, no, no, not my Maserati. Yes, your Maserati. All Maserati. All Maseratis. <laughs> There's no Maserati sponsorship here. <laughs> yeah. No. Not happening. Just pick their competitor. Also, It'll BMW, be just take me off your list. I don't like your cars. No, um, not going to happen. And by the way, yeah, this goes back to if you have a clear plan of what your major, what the best school is for you, I don't, I don't want to discourage you. You should no. shoot for that. Absolutely. But keep in mind, 20 to 50% of students, they enter school as undecided, and then most of them, not so, most of them end up changing their major. Again, step one, you want to fix it. Go to a reasonable school. Step two, don't major in worthless <laughs> shit. Yeah. Step three, finish your degree, and you will avoid this problem. This is a brilliant ploy, right? You tell people, young people, millennials, as Bernie Sanders said, his voting base, you tell them that they are the victim of some predatory system of lending, right? You encourage yeah. them to saddle themselves with more debt in attending universities that they can't afford, often mm. pursuing degrees that guarantee, all but guarantee, an inability to pay off that debt. Not to mention, by the way, you are encouraging young people to make arguably the largest financial decision of their lives yeah. before they graduate graduate high school because they're already applying. You further encourage, you further incentivize this behavior with grants and scholarships from the government, like you said, which also leads to, to simultaneously hyperinflates, right, the cost of education overall. And then you bribe the voters who followed your instructions explicitly by promising to bail them out with other people's money. And this is something I hear a lot. You hear people saying, well, why shouldn't we bail out students? We bailed out the banks. How about we bail out nothing? How about we don't yeah. bail out Goldman Sachs? Or the Afro-Lesbian <laughs> Studies major. Yeah. How about that? You hear these songs? I hate the identity politics that you hear on the right as well. Like, while well, they're living it up on Wall Street, they're shutting Detroit down. Shut them both down. Shut all of it down. I'm not looking for, is it Bear Stearns? Goldman Sachs, Bear Stearns? Bear Stearns. Bear, which there's, there's Bear and there's Bull, correct? Bear, Bear Stearns Bear is the Stearns. bank, bear market, bull market. You can see, I don't know <laughs> economics. I just make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> But we should not be bailing out any of these people. What's the root of the problem here? And again, I want to hear from you. I understand that people on both sides are compassionate. The root of the problem is telling kids who have no idea what they want to do with their lives to make the biggest financial decision of their future before they have any real world experience claim that this is what is required right now in the modern workplace and to have self-esteem. We're also, by the way, tying up children, tying up young people's self-worth with the degree they have, with a sheet of yeah. paper to tell people how important they are and then promising that we are going to bail them out. It doesn't work. It has not worked. It will not work. The solution is not to bail people out. The solution is that everybody start taking pers uh, personal responsibility and making better decisions for yourself. What is that? Let me go through it one more time, okay? Don't waste money going to an expensive university if you don't have to. Don't get a useless degree and finish if you do go to school. Congratulations, I just saved you $1.4 trillion in a national bailout.
Hey, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe or hit the notification bell or uh, watch the full show that is playing uh, in a box, I believe, on this screen uh, next to me. Now, if you don't like it because you disagree with my stance on student loans, I understand and I want to hear from you in the comment section. And uh, I would also like you to send uh, an envelope of unmarked bills to P.O. Box 4056 in Schenectady, New York, um, to do your part. Again, that's P.O. Box. Well, I'll put it down on screen because I, I won't remember uh, the number that I just made up.